I have a separate video on role playing for simulation session one and I got a request to do one for simulation session two and I know it really helped people so here we go. If you're anything like me you want to come into anything prepared and I know you don't have to study for simulation session two leading up to it like a normal exam but if I can make this video to alleviate even the tiniest bit of anxiety about role playing during Sims 2 let's do it. Before we get into it and just like that last video I'll give you my exact script to refine and make your own but first off congratulations you're basically four days away from completing the entire program. If you choose the weekday simulation session two, it's just Monday to Thursday. And if you choose the weekends, it's just two consecutive weekends this time, both Saturdays and both Sundays, so four days total. I say basically complete because you still have that last money grab of C5, but it's essentially nothing. It's either 15 minutes of clicking through or about a two hour read. So basically done after Sims 2. Okay, so Sims 2, and I remember hearing firsthand from the facilitators that this did have a 95% success rate of passing. That percentage might have dropped since I've taken it because I do get a lot of people reach out to me that are struggling with the Sims 2 exam. So let's take this serious and finish strong. And as always, if you're looking for that additional support to make sure you pass first try, look for my exam master mini course on Sims 2 in the description below. It's mini notes, mini quizzes, my exact fundamentals I used to pass all exams first try, as well as I break down 30 plus questions on video for Sims 2 that you might see on the exam. That link in the description below, as always, is a value link as well for the YouTube family, but let's just dive right into the video. Role playing in these simulation sessions can be daunting, but the best way to look at it is that you're all in the same boat. Everyone has to do it. Everyone to a certain extent has to get themselves out of their comfort zone. But if you look at it in a positive light, you are here, you are doing this, watching this video, and you're coming in a bit more prepared that can boost your confidence. So just like my previous video, we'll look at a script that I wrote for your first role play in simulation session two and a refresher of how to write one. Same as before, if you've done Sims 1, you're gonna be separated into breakout rooms of two to four people. And at the time of this video, it's all done online through the magic of Zoom. Once in your breakout room, you will have one person role play the salesperson, one person role play the the buyer and one person watch as the observer to critique. So the main one really is the salesperson. The observer is basically nothing and the buyer only has three questions to ask actually, which we'll get to and I actually do have answers to in the description below with my role playing script. If you get a really gung ho buyer student role player, they may ask you a few more questions, but most will just listen politely because you're all in this together. So before we touch on the script, just like before, you'll have your performance checklist. A lot of people just literally read from here. In my opinion, this can get a little robotic and they do give you 15 minutes to basically prepare. So you might as well start writing this script. You do not have to memorize this script, even the one that you wrote by any means. Through the power of Zoom, you can literally just open it up in front of the camera and read it just like you're reading almost with eye contact to your classmates. The power and magic of Zoom can be utilized in our favor. So once you understand the scenario, hit every performance checklist point in your own words, just as you would explain them to your own clients. Again, try not to sound robotic. You will have people just reading off that checklist that will sound a bit robotic and that's perfectly fine. But visualize yourself almost having this conversation in a room with one of your clients. You're gonna have engaging conversations conversation, you're going to be asking them questions, you're going to be making sure they're paying attention to what you're talking about. So I always like to start off these role plays with some pleasantries, basically an introduction of what we're going to be talking about, just how I would if I was in front of somebody in real life. And again, I'll just touch on this script. It's in the description below, but take it, make it your own, use it as extra support to help you with this first role play that no one feels comfortable with. So like mentioned, I would just start with the pleasantries. I'd say, hello, buyer name. Usually this buyer name would just be one of the names of the classmates. I've got their name. I'd write it in here. 
How are you today? Great. Okay, things are getting exciting, but we have to just take a quick sec and go over a couple conditions in this agreement of purchase and sale. These conditions are to protect your best interests and provide you with the opportunity to do your due diligence prior to the offer becoming firm and binding. Sound good? Then from here, just go to the next point on the performance checklist, just like if you're writing your own script, say for the second role play. And as you can see here, it says for day two, so if nothing's changed, you might not even have any role playing on day one. And you can see that it's conditional on inspection and review of any leases. And I'll quick point out as well, because your facilitators might ask this, this is actually a condition subsequent. You can see here, and if you read this close, the buyer may terminate the agreement. That's a key word right there, terminate. And below that, if they do not terminate the agreement within the time period, the offer shall remain valid and binding. And even at the bottom, it mentions terminate as well again. This is a condition subsequent, and in real life, we will rarely ever use this, and the facilitators will probably mention this or talk on this a little bit during the week or weekend. If this read, the offer will become null and void, that is a condition precedent. This is what we'll be using most in the real world, but they used a condition subsequent in this that needs to be terminated, right? You have to take action to terminate it, which is not ideal, but they use this because in commercial real estate, although it still might not come up much, is used significantly more than residential. So from here, you would just keep reading, you would keep role playing as the salesperson. Awesome. So the first condition is for the inspection and approving the building. This will allow you to have third party professionals come in and inspect the property and any improvements the seller may have made. We must keep all results of any inspection confidential and you are under no obligation to disclose the results of any of your own inspections. From there, my role-playing script just goes into the leases we have to do as part of an, the second condition, as well as making sure our clients understand that we're on a time frame. You and your buyers being in good communication is essential for doing business and in this case, even more so being that it's a subsequent. Below that, like mentioned, is the answers to the three questions that the buyer role player will be asking you. And you can see, if you just scroll down in your workbook, that this will be their buyer role play card here. And you'll have to do a version of that as well when your fellow classmates are playing the salesperson or the observer. So my script, so you have it to come in more prepared, is just six short paragraphs followed by three answered questions. Too easy. At the bottom below that, and I always mention this, and I always have this top of mind, even when I'm describing or explaining agreement of purchase and sales to my buyer or my seller, is that all agreements of purchase and sale are written in good faith, and both parties must take reasonable action to accomplish the conditions of the agreement. Use this script to help come in more prepared, and like mentioned, if you need more support, look for my Exam Master mini course on Sims 2 in the description below, or better yet, you're at the end of this program. If you're looking for real help on working with buyers and sellers, the logistics of actions to get ready to come into the real world, look for my buyer and seller course that goes from A to Z specific to Ontario. This course will 100% empower you. It's finding properties for your clients that fit their criteria, setting up showing, setting up hot sheets and auto emails, doing full CMAs to find the value of properties, writing offers, in web forms, refining them in AuthentiSign, everything A to Z from the entire process. I 100% guarantee that course will save you so many hours, alleviate so much stress, and maybe the most valuable part because that information is so hard to learn and retain is you have it to refer back to when needed. And of course, it's a value link as well for the YouTube family for that course as well. But thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions at all, you can DM, email, comment on this video. I get back to everyone. My name is Callum Moore, eXp Realty real estate agent here in Ontario, and we'll see you in the next one.